Hello and welcome to Frank's School, 142nd day of the fifth year. Uh, all these prequels, uh, prequels uh, uh, leading up to uh, a, uh, a recommended itinerary that you may come along on or may use uh, to Portugal and the Alps. Well, in all these prequels, I finally get to Portugal today, Lisbon, 1970. Uh, what is it, 46 years ago. Um, and uh, some of it I remember very clearly, uh, some of it not so clearly, but uh, in our trip, uh, this is Joyce, my first wife and I, uh, having been in Peace Corps for two years, uh, we got to come home and bed our trip to include Europe. All right, so going into Lisbon, this was my second time there. I had been there three years before and at that time spoke no Portuguese and loved the city as much as I can ever love a city. I, I don't like cities, but... But here was a city that suited me. Um, and now both of us spoke fluent Portuguese, and once again, uh, you know, uh, we loved the city, uh, as much as I can love a city. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm not going to go into, uh, we did the obvious things. This was Joyce's first time, my second. I was pleased to be able to introduce it to her. St. George's Castle, I mean, these, these are things, these are must, really, uh, must sees and I'll, I'll say more about it later when I actually get to the itinerary itself But I'll just be quick about this uh, The the elevator uh, Santa Justa right downtown uh, St. Jerome's Monastery, which really is in Belém uh, The various monuments at Belém. We went to the coach museum. I'm fairly sure don't remember it real clearly uh, And we had to get I had to get an international driver's license because we were going to rent a car uh, so I don't know if we were there two days or three, I'm um, just not sure, uh, I can't remember. But the two things that I really want to mention that were formative for us, for me, uh, well, I should mostly speak for me, speak for me, is first of all the Folk Art Museum, uh, Museu, Museu de Arte Popular. Uh, Museum of Popular Art, it says. I still have the guidebook that I got at that time. Oh, and you know, normally I, I would not, uh, I'm not, I don't think of myself as that good of an art appreciator, but this was different. <laughs> this was very, very different. This was a collection of stuff from the life of the folk, and it was dazzling. It, it, I never forgot it. Uh, uh, to the extent that uh, later, uh, you know, the next two times I was in Lisbon. I thought about trying to find that museum again, see that stuff again, and failed. Uh, and there was a reason I failed. They, the, the second time when I was there with Shirley, we found the museum. Went in there, the stuff was gone. Uh, I just spoke about this elsewhere, and I said to the ladies there, I said, where, where did the stuff go? And they were a little unsure themselves, uh, and so I didn't, I was just kind of left depressed that, that this fabulous collection, I wouldn't get to see it again. But anyway, eventually I did find it again, and I spoke about this elsewhere online. It's in the Museo Nacional de Etnologia, uh, in the National Museum of Ethnology. It's not open to the general public, the collection. It's in the Galeria da Vida Rural, uh, the gallery of uh, rural life. Uh, and there, by special arrangement, it's possible to see it. And I did see it. The last time I was in Portugal with the Hawklings, I very nearly wasn't able to see it, but I was able to see it. I filmed it to the extent that I could within about an hour. And uh, I put it online. I got the director's permission to go ahead and put it online. My, my photographs are, are not that good because the light wasn't that good. But I was so happy to see that stuff again, and I'll give you the link. Uh, it's a slideshow. Just I don't I don't think there's any talking or music or anything. It's just picture after picture after picture as I walk through that Galeria Givida Rural. So I hope you look at that. As I say, I'll give you that link. Formative uh, for me, uh, and as I said at, at that time, when, when I this last time when I got to see it, I, I told a woman that had taken her time to take me there, that I think this is the best collection of its kind in the world. 
there are other good collections like that, but I would still stand by that. It, it's it's really wonderful of that kind. And the other thing that that is is real special for us, for me, is uh, the Museum of Decorative Arts, Museo de Artes Decorativas. You know, when I think back, I'm a little bit surprised that, that Joyce probably convinced me to go there, or or maybe I, I don't know, I don't know how we came up with going there. Decorative arts, uh, uh, but uh, we went there, and the museum. You know, it was a, a former palace that was full of incredible antiques, incredibly expensive antiques back from the time when Portugal was, you know, in its glory, um, and. Uh, as a, normally that kind of really fancy, expensive stuff does not appeal to me. I'm more of the folk kind of person. But what made that so special is as we were going through it, and now both Joyce and I spoke Portuguese, and the guide who was showing us the museum mentioned that if we, I think it was largely because we were so interested and because our Portuguese was so good, that uh, he said, well, maybe you'd like to see the shops. <laughs> we said, the shops? Uh, he, I don't know if he said come back this afternoon or, or if he did it right around. That I don't remember. But uh, that was what was uh, 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 formative. Uh, we were given a tour of the set of shops, the oficinas, uh, you say, in, uh, in uh, Portugal, where they had craftsmen of all kinds that were making replicas of this French 18th century furniture and book binding and gold hammering and, and uh, just all these, all the arts that were demonstrated in there, they had shops where people could still do that stuff. And we got to go into those shops and see them. It was wonderful. <laughs> And I'm just not sure how special that was at that time. We had the feeling that it was a very special thing that we were allowed to see them, that it wasn't normally done. But uh, I've been back, uh, and I found it. Uh, I got to see it again, have it online. And there I found that uh, certain days of the week, uh, that, that for it costs you a, little, like, a good bit extra to go in to see those shops but you can be part of a, a guided tour through those shops. It's sort of official now. I'm not so sure it was then. It may have been, I don't know. But it's in the, uh, the uh, uh, Largo da, das Portas do Sol, uh, which is certainly worth seeing. Anyway, this I will also give you the link. I filmed it badly. My camera was running out of memory and uh, I moved it too much and I was excited uh, when I got to see that. That was when I was there with, uh, with uh, Erica, uh, my, uh, my daughter. Right, right. As a matter of fact, right after I retired, this would be about five years ago, and I first went back to Europe. This had been my sort of goal, my pilgrimage. All the way from Denmark I traveled, all the way down uh, across uh, Europe, and as an all I wanted to go to Lisbon. But as an ultimate goal of my pilgrimage, my pilgrimage site, I wanted to get back to the, those shops. And I did. Once again, I very nearly missed it, but I was able to. Uh, so that was, and, and on that trip, I was traveling with my daughter, Erica. Well, both of these things, they were formative to me, and that's why I'm sharing them now. But when I get to the itinerary itself, these are not things for your average first time traveler to Lisbon, uh, I don't think. Uh, I, and so I'll, I, as I describe an itinerary, I'll, I'll do more with this kind of stuff. Uh, but I wanted to say that, and then uh, in the next video I'll explain that we, we then rented a car and headed north, and I'll have more to say about that. Bye for now.